whoever is watching the recording, you can just fast forward the initial 10 minutes. You'll be able to watch the actual recording, actual session. Whoever has joined, please uh, intimate in the chat box.
you can update uh, in the chat box, that would be nice. Thank you. 
So we'll start with two minutes of silence. So we'll hear a uh, gong bell. Then uh, the concluding bell also will uh, alert you about the conclusion of two minutes. So you need not to worry about the timing. There is a timer set. So you can close your eyes and observe the silence for two minutes. Good morning. So let's start second session of our weekend course. Uh, there are some messages. I want to download and print out the study material provided, uh, but never to download from the link. How we get it? So I'll help you uh, to do that uh, with you uh, over the WhatsApp course. Right, so that's very easy. Uh, from Google Drive, you can download it, and many people have downloaded it and printed it also. So that's not a big issue. That's a technical thing. Uh, if, if it's not possible, then I'll send you the PDF separately. Yeah. So the topic is uh, basics of nature cure. We started yesterday, and uh, the three days are being observed as unlearning, relearning, and implementation of you. So, to understand this science, this science is not a new uh, science at all. This is just exploration and observatory science of nature. There is nothing uh, intervened uh, from uh, our side, like the human side. It's just uh, observation and uh, analyzing the nature. Right. And as the human civilization have grown up, we have actually intruded a lot of uh, things to our lives because of which we perhaps forgotten have forgotten this uh, beautiful science of managing our health and happiness so to remind that already known science we need to unlearn a few things so yesterday we have observed uh, the unlearning day and today is the relearning day so unlearning was mainly focused on unlearning few unwanted things that has conditioned our understanding and lives. So uh, I'll quickly revise yesterday's session also. Then we'll trip to today's relearning portion. So as uh, I often 
share that uh, pure nature cure is the dialectic materialistic science and dialectic materialistics is the combination of why factor the factor of reasoning capability of mankind and taking care of this physical body primarily so if you combine that then it becomes a dialectic materialism dialectic if you define dialectics the meaning of dialectics is the investigation of truth by arguments and counter arguments so it's a continuous process so truth as i say ultimate truth is something but your truth is your truth at that very particular moment and it should be approached and reached out through a dialectic process idea so this is very important understanding uh, to lead a dialectic rational life you know so we should not compare uh, each other's truth we can target the ultimate truth but at very specific point whatever is your understanding is your understanding that cannot be matched by any other person and matching that actually uh, trigger a lot of conflicts so these uh, reaching is uniquely perceived and unique, this journey is absolutely unique journey right and materialistics means it the matter the actual matter the substance the body how to take care of this body so that we can enjoy the life with the full of health and happiness so definitely the why factor is the primary factor and when we talk about the physical body and overall health and happiness then this is the first question that bothers us so mankind since beginning was actually striving hard to understand and answer this particular question why disease occurs so to know that we understood little bit uh, yesterday and i'll just quickly revise those aspects which we have covered yesterday so the definition of nature cure nature cure is the science of vitality management and vitality is the life force within so if you consider your life then it's, it's a combination of your body and some force within so that force and body makes you living so that force is the vitality it is quite similar to the energy which we read uh, and study in the physical science but it is beyond that because it is energy with intelligence so that's the vitality and while understanding the vitality and nature cure we need to understand the importance of thermodynamics it's an observatory physics so uh, the thermodynamics actually explains a lot of uh, aspects of uh, Uh, how heat and energy works in our day-to-day -day lives and in this universe so the first law of thermodynamics says it's also called as conservation of energy the law of conservation of energy so that uh, this particular law says that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed so yesterday we did some uh, whiteboard work also uh, as i remember that the system and surrounding we need to understand the the first law of thermodynamics explains the heat contained the energy contained within a system now this is a system the body is a closed system right so as you see here the system is this is an isolated system and the surrounding is the out of that so this is the surrounding and this is the system now within this system whatever vitality or the energy is housed that will remain unaltered till the death so the energy or the vitality within this system can never be created extra or destroyed completely till we die right so so what happens is we actually do use that particular vitality in our living process so there is a balance of consumption and conservation conservation going within 24 hours and the whole nature cure is focused on the conservation of vitality so that we can have an optimum level of health and happiness now after this foundation of uh, nature cure we covered two laws the voice of the organism and the law of
The voice of the organism is nothing but understanding our senses. So we know about the five senses that we have, but beyond five senses, there are a lot of senses within working. So these five senses are outward. So it is mode of communicating with the external world. world. But there are a lot of senses within which you need to understand and assimilate the understanding into the feeling to have an optimal level of health and happiness. So while explaining the voice of the organism, we explain the good thing and bad, good sense and the bad sense. The stimulus, consideration of stimulus is very much important in understanding the senses. If the good sense is experienced by us, then we need to go back to understand the stimulus. Whether the stimulus is natural or it is man-made, artificial, unnatural stimulus. So if it is a natural, then we need to accept it. So that is the good sense analogy. So if you sense something good and the stimulus which is triggering that good sense is natural, then we should accept that particular good sense. Uh, stimulus in our life. Now, if you have a bad sense, if you have a bad sense, then irrespective of the fact that the stimulus is natural or artificial, we should reject it. So, that is what is the understanding of voice of the organism. Now, coming to the law of unity, so law of unity could uh, be explained in a little bit metaphorical level that we all are connected in this universe and we cannot exist isolated and happy uh, our own without considering others happiness but for the interest of making it more dialectic I will prefer to uh, focus it on the health level so as far as the health is concerned the holistic health consideration is the law of being. so we should not consider any part of the body for its well-being without considering the whole well-being, the complete well-being of ours. So uh, Rashmi has joined long back. Uh, so welcome Rashmi, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining the session. Yeah, so uh, now what I was talking about the law of unity is considering any part of the body as the most important part is a defining of law of unity. We need to consider the whole body as a whole body. So that actually includes how should we address the discomfort, the suffering. As they say, the pain is mandatory. Pain is a process. Yesterday we had been discussing about the pain and we were trying to understand how the pain occurs, what is the connection of pain with the toxin and all those stuff. But let's uh, emphasize on this aspect primarily that pain is mandatory. But Suffering is often an interpretation. So it is an optional aspect. So suffering needs to be addressed by keeping the law of unity in mind. In one part of the body, the pain is occurring. So if we address that particular point to get rid of the pain, then it is actually defying the law of unity. We need to consider the whole aspect and we need to address the cause of that pain so that the pain gradually will go up. If you, if you seek for immediate relief of the pain, then that will be a suppression of the cause. Suppression of the pain and the enhancement of the cause in fact. So rather than focusing on the symptoms, by understanding the law of unity, if we focus on the cause which is connected in the complete body because the body is completely connected by the blood. So if one cell of the body is weaker, then we cannot claim that the other cell is strong because the blood which feeds one cell feeds the all, all the cells of the body. So this is what is the law of unity. Now we talked about innervation. Innervation is depletion of vitality. That means the vitality that we have, if it is depleted more than a limit, then we'll arrive a state of innervation. So in a layman language, it's a tiredness, it's a kind of tiredness which gives you indication that your vitality is spent beyond the limit and we need to rest. So that indication is given in the state of innervation. 
Now, uh, to explain this innervation, I must say that uh, what we uh, do in terms of currency, the money that we have, suppose we uh, go to the market with the lack of a fees and uh, we uh, have a list to purchase, list of items to purchase. Now, in that, if we end up purchasing a specific item without the planning uh, worth 80,000 rupees, then you are left with 20,000 rupees. And with that 20,000 rupees, you have to accommodate the planned list. Now, to accommodate that planned list, it's impractical, impossible to accommodate the complete list. So, you need to curtail. Right. And to curtail that, in the state of innervation, we explained yesterday that uh, the input processing and output aspect, that this is all the machines are replicated by seeing this uh, phenomenal machine called body. Right. In the body, there is an input, there is a processing unit, and there is an output. output. Right. So now the input processing, input is a conscious aspect that we do consciously and processing is a beyond conscious aspect which is which is happening within us 24 7. Now the body will try to give you the best of experience as far as the first two steps are concerned. In case of innervation, the primary aspect which is objective or which is affected is the output. Now the output is affected in case of innervation. Now what the output means? The output is nothing but the output material that we throw out of the body in terms of stool, urine, sweat and exhaling air. Now these are happening, for example exhaling air is a continuous elimination and sweat, urine, stool are a regular elimination through which what do we do? We actually expel and throw the toxin. Now if we throw the toxin and if we limit the throwing of the toxin in case of innervation then what will happen? The toxins are actually retained in the body and we suffer from a state called toxin. So this is a state where actually okay Rashmi says can't connect uh, Rashmi, can you can you hear me? I'm not sure uh, if Rashmi can hear uh, me out, but uh, if uh, she couldn't connect, then she can definitely watch the recording. <coughs> right. So we are here to get the response from Rashmi. Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm not sure if she is watching. So let's proceed. So I was talking about the toxin. The toxemia is a state of accumulated toxins within the body, and that accumulation can happen in any part of the body. And in any part uh, can be named by any facilitated disease, like if the toxins are accumulated in the in the joint, then it is uh, termed as arthritis. So the name is given, but it's actually toxin. If it is accumulated in the pancreas and pancreas is not functioning well, then we are termed as diabetic. So that's a name, but it is actually toxin. If the toxin is accumulated in the artery, then the artery will affect the functioning of the heart because it is coming out of the heart. Now, if that is happening, then heart will suffer from blockages and we call that state as heart disease, but it is actually toxin. So the disease is a single, as per nature cure, it's a unity of disease. The single disease that we suffer from is the toxin. It starts with the innervation. So this understanding is a basic understanding of nature cure and we ended up to here yesterday and we also explained the fallacy of germ theory and the deficiency theory because both the theories both the aspects of health is the effect of toxin. It is not the cause of the toxin. So germs actually gather, comes or evolved from within also. There are a lot of uh, deeper aspect of it that we have basic germs inside the body which gets evolved in case of toxinic condition. So those germs actually comes to eat up the toxins and we name that germs as the cause of the that's a that's a uh, misunderstanding that we play around. 
Okay. And uh, another is the FSAs. So we analyze the blood and we see that in a diseased condition, this particular element of the blood is less or more and uh, that is the cause of the disease. So it is again a limited explanation of the disease because the state of toxemia started earlier, then you suffered something and then you analyze that instance, the blood of that instance and you found some misalignment of a specific range of the blood element, then you term the cause as that deficiency or excess. So it is again a limited explanation of that. So it is actually the effect of toxin. toxin. If we work on the toxemia, then the infection or the deficiency both go away. So this understanding is very much important. And this is a part of unlearning that we need to imbibe. Right. Now, now let's start the relearning of the aspects of nature. So basically, nature cure, I am often asked that why it is called cure. And I emphasize that cure is nothing. It's a 24-7 uh, phenomena that is happening within us. Now, why do we call this cure? Because it's a default mechanism happening and we end up getting cured of the problem. That is why it's a human explanation of cure, nature cure. But it is a default mechanism within us, which is called metabolism. Right, so what is metabolism? Metabolism is actually a combination of two sub processes, catabolism and anabolism. Now, catabolism is nothing but breaking down of the cells of the body. It's a progressive process. It's not that the cell is completely taken and thrown out. It's a progressively the portions of the cells are being broken down and anabolism is the building up of the cells. So, cells are slowly and gradually being replaced through these two processes. <coughs> catabolism, the breaking down and anabolism is the building up. So, through that process, the body cells are being replaced in a continuous process. So, with that, the newer cells, if are healthy, then we term that we got cured. If the newer cells are not healthy, then we term that we got disease. So, this is what is the, if the newer cells are toxic, then we are actually diseased. If the newer cells are less proximate and healthy, then we term that we got cured. So, it, if you do not worry much about the curing process, we just can focus on those two aspects of innervation and toxemia. Basically, the innervation, lessening as of the innervation will take care of everything. That is the primary aspect. So, to understand the health, we can go specifically to each health problem and connect this with the toxemia and innervation and we can educate ourselves to enhance the conservation of vitality so that the innervation is lessened and we get the better metabolic process and better healthy cells for the future. So the newer healthy cells, if those are built up in a less innervated state, then those will be healthy, healthy cells. So we will be taking a cure. What about the disease it may be? And in Nature cure, there is nothing autoimmune disease and all those things. You have uh, you have gone through the myths uh, of the uh, aspect of the health, uh, the first topic of uh, our course, the first chapter. In that, uh, I have explained uh, a lot of myths. One myth, one important myth is immunity. We think that immunity is great, but we will understand that diseases are great. It's a mechanism of the body to get us a cured state to, to expel the extra toxin. So, if disease is good, as we understand immunity is shielding, protection against the disease. So, how the protection of a good thing it can be good? So, immunity is not good. Vitality is everything. If we enhance vitality, we throw out the toxins, the disease will never occur in that term and we have a healthy, happy life. So, immunity is a falsified understanding and we, we run behind improving the immunity if it is if it is if it is disturbed then that's something else but if it is in principle if it is blocking of disease then it is imbalancing the body. 
and we are heading towards a lot of commodification of the problems. Right. Now, yeah, so I, would talk, I was talking about the default mechanism of, uh, of metabolic, metabolic process. So metabolic process is nothing but a combination of metabolic and anabolic, anabolic processes. And this, uh, these two processes help us to attain better health or bad health, both, both the things, because it is happening continuously. So as far as our lifestyle is concerned, if we supply the right material, with a lesser innervated state, with a higher vitality state, then the metabolic process will be very much impactful, very much effective. Then the newer cells will be much more healthy cells. Right. Now what happens when we undergo a toxic state and we do not consider the conservation of vitality and the core and we go on uh, adding toxins to our body, then body apart from those uh, four regular and continuous elimination, body actually triggers some special elimination because body will sense an excess of the toxins within the body and it will also sense that the normal and the continuous elimination which are stool, sweat and urine are the normal and continuous is the breathing are not enough to throw the extra toxins. In that state, body actually triggers some special elimination in terms of primarily fever and secondarily, tertiary, the flu, loose motion and all these aspects. So if it is a good uh, elimination, special elimination, then it, then it will be accompanied with a fever. And I come to the um, rationale of the fever and the physics of uh, understanding the fever, the beauty of fever is it's, it's amazingly effective to eliminate the toxins. Now, in that state, we call healing crisis. It is a crisis because the toxin elimination, you need to understand the toxin elimination requires a lot of vitamin. So see the intelligence and the beauty of the body. For eliminating the toxins, body requires extra vitality. And for this purpose, body will trigger this illness, so called. And we will feel tired. And by feeling tired, we will not work more. If you don't work more, then what do you do? You conserve your vitality. You are not able to work. That is the programming of the body, he tell you not to work and you will not feel taste in your tongue. So that is another way of conveying you that do eat because eating again will consume a lot of vitality during the healing crisis which body doesn't want and with this actually you end up conserving a lot of it. So that's the beauty of this healing crisis and the and the indications of the body. And now the discomforts. So this is not only the tired, tiredness or tastelessness, but you feel tremendous discomforts during the process of healing crisis. You need to understand this very specifically so that the, again that understanding will be enhanced within you that pain is mandatory, but the suffering is not. Because if you understand the rationale behind the pain, the discomforts, then your approach towards the suffering will be better. Right? Now, let's understand why we suffer the discomforts. Because the toxins, we have the uh, senses, outward senses, the five senses, the eyes, nose, tongue, ears, and skin. So these, uh, these senses are outward. And when the toxins are being thrown out, then it comes in the contact of outer senses. And toxins are irritating. Toxins are very much irritating because those are poison. It's another name of poison, right? Now, if that is there, so the moment you come in contact with the toxins, you will feel irritated. You will feel discomfort. So, the tougher the toxin that you have inside, the tougher the discomforts that you will experience. And if you sub, if you wish to suppress that particular 
discover that what you do, what you end up doing is retaining that toxin inside. So you need to be patient and sail through that discomforts because it is happening good for you. Your toxins are being eliminated and with the experience of toxins at the outer level of your senses, you feel discomforts. That's an obvious aspect. So during the healing crisis, the tiredness and tastelessness are the indication to convey or uh, the conveyance of the body uh, to you that you should take rest, rest, rest physically, physiologically and psychologically so that the conservation of vitality yeah, Rashmi is back again. So welcome back, Rashmi. Rashmi might be really uh, experiencing some uh, difficulty in the, in the connection. So that doesn't matter because the recordings are kept. But definitely the live has got its own charm. So, uh, so try to attend the live. If not, then watch the recordings. Right. So coming back to this, that rest, 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 physical, physiological, and psychological. So these three kind of rest will enhance the conservation of vitality. And the discomfort. The discomfort is when this toxin elimination, the spatial elimination of the toxin is happening. That time, that time actually your outer senses come in contact with the toxins. And toxins are irritating in nature. Those are poison. We should not retain that inside our body. The moment the external senses experience the toxin, it irritates. And that irritation is nothing but the discomfort. So, if you understand this physics, the physics of discomfort and physics of tiredness and tastelessness, then your understanding is clear. Now you will be able to sail through the discomforts and assist the body to complete its work. We often, what we do, even in the practice of nature cure, there are a lot of malpractices without, uh, uh, without having a deeper understanding perhaps. Uh, we end up focusing on the discomforts and get an immediate relief. So as I, as I proudly say that my courses are not for the people who do not like to think. It is a NAC development course. With, the, with this particular understanding, we will develop a NAC to approach the things deeper. And with that deeper understanding, we will sail through and we will assist the body very effectively and smoothly. Because Always understand that suffering is an interpretation. Suffering is just optional. You may opt to suffer or not to suffer. Pain will happen. Pain is a practical thing. Pain is a sign of vitality. Pain is a pressure. Pressure means the force. The force means the energy. So it is connected with the vitality within. So pain will happen for sure. But the suffering is your choice. So, healing crisis, one aspect that actually is programmed within us to throw out the extra toxins. Now, without knowing much, and we, uh, we get uh, impatient with the uh, discomforts, what we do? We end up suppressing the particular initiative of the body. But the body is the best friend, you know, because it will never leave you alone. Whatever you do, you suppress the initiative to the body, it will again come back to help you out to get rid of the toxin. That's the beauty. And now in the next slide, you'll, you'll come to know about the beautiful process of the body as explained by the nature cure. The, the stages of the disease I'm going to explain now. Right. This is a very important uh, aspect to understand about the health and the way body works. You know, till the time of death, the body only tries to help us at every moment, whatever you do consciously. Because, see, here we need to understand the conscious and the non-conscious aspects. So I, I don't like to use the subconscious, superconscious and uh, unconscious words because those are related to the brain and mind only. But the complete beyond conscious aspect is something beyond, something beyond the brain and mind. So first of all, the mind is never claimed to uh, be located in the brain only because your all parts of the body has got its own mind and understanding and mechanism, memory, everything. Right. So just 
to understand the conscious and beyond conscious aspect, we need to understand that the beyond conscious aspects are the aspects which are happening beyond our conscious mind. And it is, it is just a, a, a this particular image I'm not sure if it can be visible on my phone actually I keep it as wallpaper I can share this can you see this iceberg in this iceberg only 10 to 12 portion is above the, uh, above the water level and below which is the major portion and the same is our conscious and beyond conscious aspects the beyond conscious aspects is the bigger aspects, much bigger aspects, it's uh, more than nine times. Uh, so, so, so conscious aspects, whatever we do, that has got an influence to the beyond conscious obviously, but that influence can only disturb the process of beyond conscious. So, all in all, the endeavor that we have initiated is to have the conscious aspects aligned with the beyond conscious aspects so that we can facilitate and assist the beyond conscious aspects because beyond conscious aspects are phenomenal those are highly intelligent process and it's beyond our uh, comprehension to explain each and everything of the beyond conscious but whatever we can explain we find those are phenomenal those are exceptionally intelligent work of nature Right. So, so all in all, our endeavor is to make an understanding, make a conscious understanding of this beyond conscious aspect so that slowly and gradually we can align ourselves with the beyond conscious aspect and we can enjoy the best of the health and happiness. Now coming to the stages of disease. As I was explaining the suppression, so whenever a body triggers some kind of pain crisis, we tend to get worried with the discomforts that we feel, that momentary discomforts. To get rid of the momentary discomforts, what we do? We opt some or other channels of getting rid of that particular discomfort without going deeper. Now, those are called suppression. So, when you suppress yourself, when you suppress your initiatives of the body, that time body will find another route to complete its work and progressively it will enhance the long term problem, problem because the short term problems are suppressed, the short term discomforts are suppressed. So this is the way it uh, goes, you know, um, yeah. So, so these are the seven stages of disease as per the nature theory. Right. Now, the point A is the innervation. Point B is toxin. Now, what happens? In point A, when you are innervated, body will give you the indication. Yeah, fan is on the screen, it seems. Let me let me lower the speed of the fan. Yeah, it's it's uh, not too hot here. So, I load the speed of the fan. Uh, is it fine now? How is the audio for others? If uh, you can uh, confirm on the chat. How is the audio now? Right, so let me continue. Uh, you can you can keep on confirming because uh, say this uh, Facebook has got little lag actually. Whenever I'm communicating, it will uh, 
reach you after few seconds. So uh, the delay is uh, yeah better. Thanks, thanks, Rashmi, uh, for confirming this. Now, yeah. So uh, what I was trying to explain in this graph is, um, so this uh, the the black these letters are stages of the disease, and the green ovular uh, shapes are healing crisis and these red lines are separation and this particular graph actually the x-axis is the disease chronification with respect to time so this is actually time time progress and the vitality spent is this the y-axis so y-axis is the vitality spent and x-axis is the time progression and this a b c d e f g are the stages of this this is very important understanding i'll go a little slow to enhance your uh, reception of the information because um, the attention span matters in this long uh, sessions mainly online session where I cannot see you, I cannot see your expression. So I'll go a little slow. So these A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the stages of disease which progress with the suppressions. Now let me explain. This A is the innervation. And in the innervation, you see the vitality spent goes up and you feel innervation. That's what we try to understand that whenever the vitality spans are more going beyond a limit then you suffer innervation and that at that moment body gives enough indications in terms of the voice of the organs you will feel tiredness you will feel constipated you will feel sleeplessness kind of agility lot of indications will be there so in that at that point if you can opt rest, 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 physical, physiological and psychological. I, I'll repeat these uh, rest phenomena separately also. Just understand the overall conservation of vitality needs to be enhanced. If you can enhance that, then you will get rid of the A. But, and that, that is a sign of healing crisis, that indication I'm talking about. So that indication, if is suppressed through say for example coffee you feel tired you take a coffee which is a stimulant and which helps you to uh, get a kind of instant charge up of your stored energy and it will end up enervating you further so but you feel charged up you feel out of the discomforts at that very moment immediate relief will get but the problem happens is the toxemic condition is enhanced. So point B is a toxemic condition. Now when you suffer from toxemic state, that time also a lot of indications body will give you in terms of healing crisis and the voice of the organism will tell you to conserve vitality. You will have a lot of discomforts. You will have fever. You will have flu. You will have running nose. So all those things are the initiative of the body to throw out the toxin, to expel the toxin. Now, what happens? We end up suppressing those initiatives of the body because of that momentary discomfort. That momentary discomforts, we feel that we should get rid of that without understanding the deeper aspect of it. The more the toxins are being eliminated, better for us. What if we suffer some discomforts at that point in time while expelling that? So this deeper understanding will enhance you to accept that suffering. But if you do not understand this and you actually end up suppressing this, then what happens? You go deeper level of the stages of disease. And that's the irritation. It's a continuous irritation that you will feel. That momentary relief will stay for a few moments. 
few days but after that it will be a continuous irritation within the body because the toxins which were being thrown out is not allowed to be thrown out then it will actually flow within the body and that flowing will create irritation in different parts of the body so that is a state of irritation now that also that irritation is also the voice of the organism see the beauty of the mechanism so that irritation again will ask you to conserve vitality allow me to throw it out allow me to throw it out but if you don't hear that then and suppress that irritation also i have pain here i have pain there let me suppress this by pain killer so that suppression again will enhance or progress the disease to the inflammation state so this is the state of inflammation the d is the inflammation we see the parts of the different parts of the body being inflamed so that inflammation is is actually how body works you know the inflammation is a kind of confinement of that of the toxin in that region by the body so that the other parts are unaffected so that confinement of the toxins actually help the body to get rid of that thing through a lot of mechanisms are there the connection of the density heat and speed will talk about tomorrow in details but you will find a localized fever there in that inflammation so that means the body is actually trying to liquidify the liquefaction is happening of the toxins at that region so this is a phenomena of physics this is a clear cut physics the density reduction requires heat and the temperature increase requires energy so unless you have vitality within the portion will not be irritated and inflamed the parts of the body the, the pain in that particular body and the inflammation in that particular body is an indication that your vitality is at work and what it is working the toxins toxins are primarily solid in nature so we'll, we'll understand the cohesive water density and all those aspects little bit so whenever this toxins is accumulated then toxin the density of the toxin is high it's a solid kind of substance and body needs to expel it by reducing the density and if you understand the physics of, of density and the heat then you will understand the density can be reduced by applying the heat just think about the ice and water ice if you apply heat it becomes water so similarly the toxins which is retained within you if it is heated internally i'm not talking about the externally external aspects will be coming later on but internally if it can be heat heat enough then it will reduce the density and it will find its path to go out because you you check the all the um, expulsion the toxins that comes out of the body are softer in nature the stool ideal stool is the soft tool stool soft snake like like uh, feces is the uh, ideal feces which will not give you discomforts in passing the stool the urine obviously is liquid the sweat is liquid <coughs> the air exhaling air is further diluted in the density so <coughs> the reduction in the density is very much important in the process of elimination so that is what is being done at every moment of the body <clears throat> at every stage of the disease so i was talking about the d the inflammation the confinement of the problem and trying to solve it there now if we try to intervene there also try to suppress there also <clears throat> then what will the body body will tear up the skin of that inflammation because it was trying to trying to manage the situation by eating up and all those aspects so that the toxin will come out without giving much discomforts to you but you did not allow it then what it will do it will actually tear up the skin and it will come out it could be internally happening it could be externally happening so we call it ulcer you will be able to correlate 
different experiences of your, your life with this tree because this is one of the most uh, important aspect uh, of this particular course to understand the stages of these things. Now, when that happens, the ulceration, what the body is trying to do? The body is trying to throw out the toxins through that rupture. Through that rupture, the toxins are thrown out. And whenever that toxin, that poisonous material will come in contact of the outer skin, outer layer or any internal layer, since it is toxin, poisonous, it will burn that skin. All possibilities are there. You will have a lot of skin issues if it is coming from the outer layer of the skin. So, no wonder. It is not your skin problem. It is a problem that you retained inside. The toxins are being eliminated and the skin is the largest eliminating organ of the body. So, you will find the ulcers and the rupture in the skin because of the toxin elimination through that pore. Because body couldn't get the other roots due to the low vitality and the suppression. Suppressions causing the low vitality actually. Right. Then the ulceration if it is being again suppressed. So you are not allowing the body to throw out the toxins from that ulcer also. If we are doing that, then what will happen? The portion will harden. It will, it will be hardened. If it is hardened, then it will form a tumor. It will form a tumor. It will confine the toxin in a hard material there. At that point. Right. And what it is? It is again a help of the body towards a leaving process that it will confine that particular problem at that area only. So we form tumors, we form stones inside us. Now with the conservation of vitality, slowly and gradually at that stage also we could deal with it. And that stone can be reduced to the liquid and semi-solid uh, state and throw out of the body through different roots. But we are very much worried about the tumors. I should get rid of the tumor without understanding the physics part. If that is the phenomenon, if that is the resort and we end up suppressing the tumor, the hardening state also, then we end up by initiating a cancer. And cancer is the last stage of disease, which is very much complicated state, where the body will try to affect or include the next cell also into that territory. And it's a gradual progression. Because it is, it, is, it is always trying to throw out the toxins and not getting any place. It is caged with our intervention. And there are the stages of toxin, uh, stages of cancer which can be easily reversed. And definitely there are stages of cancer where we cannot do much, even in nature care. We need to understand this. But all in all, in this topic, we need to understand that the body is always doing the best thing under the specific circumstances first. This is the major understanding. Uh, my mother actually, um, just so you know, uh, I'm not sure if she is still here. Uh, Rekha Sarkar is my mother who has uh, joined this uh, session. So uh, my mother uh, once asked me, that um, uh, can a last stage cancer patient be helped? Can a last stage pain cancer patient be helped in nature cure? My answer was, instant answer was yes. Because it will, it may not deter the death, but it will soothe the, the suffering of that individual. Because nature cure is not deterring of the death. It is mainly a knack development 
and understanding the mechanism of the nature and the body, how it works, how beautifully it works. So the moment the individual will understand this, that this suffering, what I am doing, and trust me, the death is also an intelligent choice of the world. I'm talking about the premature death also. At any moment, if the body decides to die, it is the best decision of that body. So nature cure is not limited to understand the health and happiness, but also understanding of the death of the death is very much important. So the last stage patient who will die in any way, if he dies happily, how would that be? So nature cure understanding is very phenomenal and important understanding to understand the mechanism of this beautiful world, beautiful universe, the nature. So with that, I uh, conclude this uh, disease uh, stages. <clears throat> and we need to understand the difference between the acute and chronic disease. So uh, on the go, you can actually post your queries uh, uh, here. I'm not seeing much of queries. Maybe uh, you're not finding time to, uh, let me check once uh, the WhatsApp group, if there are some questions uh, posted after. Okay, Rashmi says that I'm not able to connect. I think my connection is slow. Uh, so there is no question in the WhatsApp group. Uh, so, guys, I'll uh, really appreciate if you uh, keep on posting your queries wherever possible. I'm open to uh, reply to all aspects because uh, definitely, if you go deeper, definitely there will be questions. So you need to address those questions unless this deeper, going deeper will never be a long term aspect. You need to go deeper and deeper as a knack so that, so that the understanding of the complete phenomena is better and better and your management of health and happiness is better and better. So please ask as many as wise possible. Right. Now, yeah. Now, taking this uh, acute and chronic diseases, you know, by definition, acute and chronic disease can be uh, measured by temperature of the body. You know, ideal. The acute condition, the ideal acute condition will have higher temperature. And uh, the chronic condition will have lower temperature normal actually lower than the normal in a severely chronic uh, condition so these aspects need to be understood so all the healing crises that i talked about are the acute diseases and when you do not have raised temperature but you are suffering from continuous discomforts which may be bearable not a huge kind of discomfort but it is a discomfort going to increase day by day without raising the temperature. It is a chronic state, whatever it is. Whatever the problem that you may suffer without raising the temperature is a chronic problem. Other than the instantaneous response of the body. For example, cough. Coughing can be in acute and chronic state both. And it can be an instantaneous response of the body. So, uh, if, you, if you look at the mechanism of cough, for an example, it is actually a vacuum mechanism of the body, of the body means the, <coughs> the wind pipe and the food pipe both goes parallelly and the wind pipe actually meets up so, so it goes This is the food pipe. This is the wind pipe actually.
So I'm um, just bear with my uh, drawing. So I'm trying to explain you something. So this is actually two pi. I'm making this two pi yellow and the wind pi the blue. Right. Now what happens in the cuffing mechanism? The wind pi here the as the structure is concerned, here the mouth is mouth and nose opening up. From from at this point actually it goes to the nose and mouth. Nose and mouth. So here in the Cuffing mechanism, it's a vacuum mechanism. The when whenever there is a mucus, so cuffing is an indication of disturbance in the windpipe. So in the windpipe, whenever there is a dust, food, and mucus. So either of these three are there. So the instantaneous response of the cuffing is the dust and food, right? So the continuous cuffing. So those will stay for little while. It will it will come and go by uh, helping you to get rid of the dust and food. If suppose food goes, so here is a valve back, valve actually. Here there is a valve. So this valve actually opens up and close down to allow you to inhale and exhale so whenever you you actually uh, eat in a wrong way then that time if the food particle goes inside then by coughing it will create a vacuum a vacuum is created so coughing mechanism is a vacuum mechanism through which the lungs actually pumps air to outside it's a beautiful mechanism to clear the wind pipe and the lungs the mucus from the lungs so cuffing mechanism is a beautiful mechanism which will which may give you some discomforts but which will relieve you from the toxins inside in terms of dust food and mucus so dust and food is a momentary discomfort but the mucus is the main problem so I was talking about the acute and chronic diseases. So the chronic disease, the cough can be chronic and acute both and the instantaneous as the dust and food part. So in the acute condition, you have fever and the cough also, coughing also, which will allow you to throw the toxins out. Now, in the chronic condition, you don't have fever, but body is trying to throw some sort of toxin because it has got lot of mucus in the lungs and it is trying to throw that. So that is the category. So we need to understand go deeper in the specific cases to understand more and more about the stage and the uh, kind of uh, disease individual is suffering from. Right. Yes. So. Next is the vitality ribbon. It's a conception that I have developed to explain and illustrate uh, how the how the vitality works with it. It's an illustration. It's not. It should not be taken as a kind of uh, kind of what you can say. It's a it's a standard uh, acceptance kind of things because I'm here to get patented and all this stuff is happening. But uh, it's, it's just to help you to understand how the vitality works with it, you know. So because this working of the vitality is very much important to manage our health and happiness. That is the primary aspect, right. Now let's see uh, these things. Uh, Sri Devi uh, died at uh, 54. Also recently Sunali Bendre is another actress who is found to be suffering from uh, cancer. Another actor, uh, another actor uh, I came to know recently who had been maintaining a very healthy lifestyle but suffering from cancer. So these phenomena, 
So Sonali Bendre, why I have explained, like I, I, I have uh, those uh, paper cutting cuttings also, where <coughs> in the month of this year, in the month of April, um, uh, Sonali Bendre was uh, um, giving a health uh, advice in in the same newspaper, uh, Times of India or something, where she is saying that uh, uh, almond is very uh, good for health, kind of, right? But uh, uh, I'll share uh, those clippings uh, sometime. So, um, but in few months, in July, in the month of July, he was the word for uh, identified or diagnosed uh, or cancer. So, so these are phenomena, you know, we need to, that bothers us a lot. What happens to this healthy lifestyle, claim health, healthy lifestyle, why she uh, died uh, early? And on the other hand, these are the examples that we come across. An individual, Richard Overton, is a veteran um, American soldier, ex-soldier. So he is still alive, 112 year old. Every day smokes cigar. cigar. This, these are more toxins than the cigarette. And uh, also uh, alcohol. So what is the fun of it? One is dying early claiming to have better health and uh, healthy lifestyle and uh, other is not maintaining the lifestyle but living more is a big question right to understand that you need to understand this aspect of longevity so longevity should not be compared to health these longevity factor is the unique unique exploration of the life by each and in, each and every one if we end up comparing the longevity we are actually we end up fooling ourselves so first understanding of the longevity it is my own own achievement unique achievement own unique achievement so that the Comparison will not bother us, number one. The attributing factors of the vitality and the longevity, both, because both are connected, super connected, are these three, you know, <coughs> genetic, environment, lifestyle. So, now genetic aspect, as they say, whatever is caste is caste. Whatever is caste is caste means the vitality that you have received during the time of birth is final. You cannot do much about it. And if you have some kind of deformities, deformities we quote, but if you have some kind of characteristics since birth, which you consider as a limited functional limitation, which will, most of the cases which will stay till your death. So you need to be rational to accept that. As uh, in psychology we uh, have this term USA, unconditional self-acceptance. So we can talk on that sometime if we get time. But the genetic aspect, we cannot do much. So we need to just accept it. Now the env environment aspect, environment aspect is one aspect what can be changed by being together? It's a community effort. As an individual, you cannot do much changing, whatever you do. You have healthy life, uh, healthy, um, healthy practices of uh, making the environment clean and all the stuff. But unless the community impact is there on the in environment, that Environment change is again is not possible to be very frank. Right. But the lifestyle. The lifestyle aspect is one aspect which is under your control. Absolutely in our, in our control. So if we can take the control of our lifestyle in a confident and serious approach with deeper understanding, 
then many of the problems which were seemingly not solvable can be solved health wise happiness wise so this is very important understanding so as far as the lifestyle is concerned lifestyle is concerned there are actually three aspects physical physiological psychological in other word mechanical chemical and mental now to understand this the physical aspect are the conscious aspects that are happening within us 20 uh, by us actually not within us by us so that are happening by us so for example today we decided to talk to each other to communicate to each other this is a conscious decision you guys also have consciously decided i also took a conscious decision so this this is a physical aspect so each and every activities which are consciously chosen by us with our own decision are the physical and the phenomena which are not happening with our conscious knowledge happening beyond our conscious knowledge are the physiological aspect now as far as this machine is concerned the physiological aspects are your breathing your digestion your assimilation complete metabolic process so these are happening beyond conscious so your conscious decisions do have an impact on the beyond conscious decision but it is not directly controlled by us for example eating eating is our conscious decision but digestion and assimilation is our beyond conscious experience or execution by the body so these beyond conscious aspects are somewhat influenced by the conscious decision if you eat good then the digestion and assimilation will be better if you eat bad then this will be impacted but directly you cannot control this physiological aspects so those are the chemical aspects that are happening with us and psychological aspects psychology uh, or the mental aspects is a vast uh, topic indeed and my my primary forte is the psychology and uh, primary interest also you can say but uh, if i concise all aspects then in one sentence lesser the thought better the vitality management lesser the thought that you have better the vitality management now how to lessening the thoughts there are roots the primary roots is sticking to the rationality sticking to sticking to the dialectical approach if you have a dialectical approach in your life then you end up reducing a lot of thoughts so this is a very uh, important uh, aspect in understanding the understanding the vitality aspect and the longevity aspect because th this is completely connected thing so longevity needs to be understood in terms of your own genetic factor environment factor it should not be con compared with each other no. and i'll come back to those two slides of sri devi and what one to explain the um, expected reasons right yeah tulika has joined long back i have seen that so welcome tulika um, you got late today uh, so never mind you can watch the recordings and today is very interesting topics we are covering uh, we are we have covered the vitality ribbon also but you are repeating this you uh, know um, of it so we can revise it in the recording so yeah i was talking about the vitality ribbon so we were before going to the vitality ribbon we need to understand the uh, phenomena of uh, vitality it's a unique wallet that we have the bad news is you cannot earn more or do whatever you want to do you cannot earn more whatever you got it got from your parents is fine you cannot earn more but the good news is you have enough and this enough requires just management the thing is if you manage your vitality well then you can have optimum 
health and happiness no matter what is the quantum that you have received that is the beauty of it, of this phenomena of nature and uh, universe Th that that's the way it works you know now let me uh, let me introduce a kind of bar first of a moment of vitality so it's a total vitality quotient that you see here you know it's a total vitality quotient now now the green portion this green portion is the conserved vitality which we do not do not use at any particular moment i'm talking about a moment now it is a single moment where we have this much of this much of vitality total and we conserve this and we spend this so we spending this red portion help us to conserve this green portion so if we work on lessening the spend we end up increasing the conserved portion of the vitality and the conserved portion of the vitality is nothing but the it is nothing but the sense of life that we experience so at this very particular moment whatever the energy whatever the sense of life that you are experiencing is nothing but the conserved vitality right now so the vitality spent controls the conserved portion of the vitality this is a very uh, important uh, understanding now if you see uh, the induction you know the habit induction if you focus on a bad habit then it has got its induction on a single moment if you focus on a bad habit bad habit means the habit which consumes more vitality spend more vitality so if you keep pay your attention to that <clears throat> next moment you have an induction so that is called negative induction where the next moment we will have more spent and lesser lesser so this is the first moment this is the second moment right so lesser uh, conservation now the, similarly the positive induction also can happen the first moment second moment where you end up conserving more by focusing on the good habits so so the question is let's focus on what to do and let's not think about what not to do that is the right way right and uh, before uh, uh, ex before introducing the ribbon i would like to introduce this aspect of sudden death also so sudden death suppose uh, i am uh, getting an electric shock and i got stuck in the electric shock and i am getting continuous shock so after a certain time i'll die what happens at that particular instant the body starts fighting with the kind of innervation like the the external force which is coming to you the body starts fighting and it will add up to the innervation but at that moment body will try hard to survive but at any instant in a single moment if it touches the brain touches the highest quotient we die that is what is the sudden death the sudden death is touching that highest quotient at any instant of life now the mature death when you know and you understand that death is death is approaching because death cannot be cannot be altered death will happen for sure right but if you know consciously that now the death is coming to me for for good the conscious dying is the mature death right now if we add up these all moments of life one by one after another then it will take a shape of a ribbon and this is what is the vitality ribbon and all you see there are ups and downs 
in different moments of life we have ups and downs in our life and that up and down actually define our sense of life if you see more green you have higher sense of life if you see less green you have lower sense of life it starts with birth at that point it ends here at the death now let's look at a uh, conventional life with casual separation a conventional life with casual separation this is that here the point 1 point 1 is birth and point 8 is death then this is young state this is a chronic state this is a conservation of vitality and this is the trigger of healing crisis and this is separation if it is opted to the sudden increase and then post separation it's a progression of disease slowly and gradually and finally it is the death it is a conventional life now vitality intelligence vitality intelligence is nothing but a good way of conservation of vitality the kind of capability that you have which uh, have a knack of conserving vitality is the vitality intelligence a well managed vitality rhythm see lot of greens here lot of greens it has ups and downs for sure but it ends with a happy day it's a gradual aging ups and downs in the spent of vitality that is an obvious aspect the peop, the person will suffer healing crisis for sure in different uh, moment of the life but it will have better sense of life throughout the living process now it's a mismanaged vitality ribbon where you see the lot of reds it's a unmindful conservation of vitality sometime will happen here there actually healing crisis also will be there and but with the separation it will progress this way and it will die on time now the explanation of those two cases number one surface do not define if your surface is glowing that means you are healthy it is not the definition holistic factors to be explored genetic attribution is one of the major aspects and the possibility of sudden death this also cannot be ignored right so uh, so the claiming of uh, great lifestyle cannot be defined through the surface what you look fresh may be a morphed fresh and in this case genetic disposition is definitely in previous case i said that it can be explored it can be influenced by the lifestyle factor or the environment factor but here in this case this person is blessed with higher vitality quotient for sure without that this kind of lifestyle will not help him to live long if he would have had a better lifestyle he would have had a better and further increased lifestyle maybe 150 years i don't know the, the person is still alive though but genetic disposition cannot be ignored and the psychological management i i have done little research about this person he is a, a military um, person ex military person and uh, these kind of people actually do not think much they are actually structurally do not uh, are not allowed to think much the military psychology actually is structured that way so that the soldiers do not think much so thinking lesser will help you to conserve vitality a lot but but again thinking lesser if it is irrationally happening that is a questionable aspect we can discuss that tomorrow in details and suppression another aspect the suppression if you if you actually opt suppression repeatedly in your life then there are chances of having an extended life like uh, for example mr bajpi uh, died recently mr karunanidhi died recently i was doing camp there in kerala tamil nadu that time so uh, 
they were in life support for long. So these life supports are suppression of body's mechanisms. Body decided to die earlier, but we have extended the lifespan. So suppression sometimes can extend the lifespan, but it is not the actual natural life with full of sense of life. That we need to understand. So uh, that actually ends uh, today's uh, session. And uh, if you have any question, because I don't see any uh, question in the chat box, only the download question, what uh, what Vidyut has raised. So other than that, uh, there are uh, no more questions. Uh, so uh, we will conclude the session and we will continue on the WhatsApp further. And we'll conclude with uh, uh, two minutes silence. Two minutes of silence. Uh, and by that time, if some uh, very urging questions coming up, you can post it in the in this next two minutes. I'll take it after the silence. Also, I'll take take that question for sure. Thank you. Let's have two minutes of silence. It will start with a gong, and then it will end with a gong. It's a prefix timer, so you need not to worry about two minutes time. It will indicate it. Just uh, close your eyes and uh, listen to the bell. Yes, so we'll end the session, today's session then. I don't see any question here uh, in the chat. So thanks for joining, continue to do tomorrow also. Tomorrow is a far more important topic, implementation. Thank you and goodbye.